kindergarten 2021 2022 let's keep rolling and getting ready for kindergarten <clears throat> we are the home of the cardinals our mascot is the cardinal which is the state bird of virginia of course too okay so here are some particulars i'm not going to on these slides go about reading everything for you. Um, again, this will be posted for you for future reference if you would need it. Some of you may have already attended some of this business getting ready for kindergarten to pre-register your child. You must be five years old on or before September 30th. Beth, do you wanna chime in about some of the confusion that seems to be out there? Yes, good morning. Uh, we have uh, had some feedback from parents that indicated they are getting a message that states their child is not um, going to be old enough to attend kindergarten next year. Um, and that is just a uh, simple uh, error that it's gonna happen if you are not registering under the 2021-2022 school year. Um, right now, when you log in, it's probably still set at 2020-2021. So um, if you make sure you've selected the correct year for your child to enter kindergarten, it should accept them with their correct birth date. And let me add, folks, if you have any questions, please submit them to the chat, and we're happy to answer them uh, as we go or certainly at the end. So feel free, feel free to add some questions or anything you'd like to share through the chat down below. So there you see before you some of the things that you'll need to finalize your registration, two proofs of residence, certified birth certificate, evidence of adequate immunization, complete Virginia physical examination forms. Beth, if you want to roll forward, we'll take a look at some of these things a little bit more. Here are some things again for you to think about before school begins. Uh, some of them are, are, are quite obvious, but uh, just boxes for us to check with you to get you thinking about some of the things. Go ahead and keep moving forward, Beth. Here are your entrance requirements again, the health information, immunizations, physical forms. There is the link down at the bottom to the division's website if you should need any more information on that and lots of other information located on the school division's website. Here's an example of the form that your pediatricians often have, um, if not always have. Uh, you won't necessarily need to bring it with you. They often have it there, but these forms are located within uh, the registration process that you can log on to. And again, I'm aware that many of you probably have already done that, which is great and you'll be awaiting hearing from our registrar, Jennifer Damien, about making an appointment to bring in certain things to us to really finish everything up. Um, you all will be making the personal decision as you move forward into the school year as to whether you are going to use the school bus transportation or whether you're going to be a parent drop-off or a parent pickup. That of course is totally up to you, whatever helps you to feel comfortable. Um, you do see there that you'll get some information from the school division about bus stop information and whatnot as we roll into August and get closer to the school year. That number at the bottom is very important. I would put it down, put it somewhere, put it in your phone. Um, always helpful to have if you have questions about bus transportation. They have GPSs on all the buses. If your uh, bus is running late, you can call into them. They can tell you what the ETA is and that sort of thing. So uh, that's, a, that's a helpful number, plus the bus mobile app. The QR codes there will help you get a lot of the information as well if you're comfortable using the QR codes. You can keep moving forward. Let's talk about food. Next year, again, also personal choice. Uh, you may be a, a packer and a brown bagger for your child or alternates, but you will uh, have access to the monthly menus posted online on our website or the division's website. Of course, as we get into the medical information or anything that relates to the food or food sensitivities or allergies, we want you to let our school nurse know so that we can have record of it and make sure we're complying to make sure everything's safe and well. All right. The division wants us to remind you there's an opportunity to receive text alerts. And that's been very helpful this year in particular. We often see, and some of you may already have children in the school division, you're receiving text that gives you alerts to check emails and things like that not always emergency situations, but for important information the division wants you to receive. Parent view, uh, gonna be very important for you. Again, some of you may already be comfortable with this. Parent view is the portal of which you'll be accessing a lot of information. It has been extremely important to us over the past year or so in terms of our virtual capabilities. Almost everything has been accessed for parents through the parent view and or the student view, uh, examples being grades, 
attendance assignments announcements um, so nothing you need to do necessarily right now but you'll hear from us at the beginning of the year encouraging actually requesting expecting everyone to register within and for parent view so next steps for you if you're still uh, thinking about things and needing more information our school website is always uh, kept up to the date uh, you can certainly schedule an appointment as I mentioned earlier uh, with our registrar Jennifer Damian um, if you need to uh, make an appointment uh, with myself or Beth Pell, we're always happy to do so. You can just send an email, give us a ring. We're happy to set up a face-to-face. -face. Or as we shift to our new realities, if you were more comfortable having a Zoom format or simply a phone call, uh, we're happy to do that with you. There's our school number, our school uh, address, and uh, we are always here to help you. So believe it or not, I didn't do the count. I forgot to do the count, but I was wanted to give you a count of how many days it is till the first day of the school year. And just as a reminder for the first time um, ever in Williamsburg, James City County, we're gonna be starting before Labor Day. Um, you'll get more information about that. And um, we'll talk more about some unique things that we're going to do for our kindergartners before the school year starts as well. So let's roll forward. And we'd like you to meet three of our current kindergarten teachers who will be three of our five hopeful kindergarten teachers for next year. Mrs. Forgett, Ms. Nall, and Ms. Turner. Um, they are three uh, who are holding down the fort this year. They are gonna take it here for a while and talk to you a little bit more about things specifically related to kindergarten. Thank you, ladies. We'll turn it over to you. My name is Mrs. Forgett, Dawn Forgett. And I've been teaching, uh, this is my 18th year, and I've been in kindergarten every year at Matoka except for one. Um, Mrs. Pell, can you move the slide to the next? Thank you. So um, I just wanted to go over a typical day for your child. The uh, times are subject to change because we get um, a week before school starts, we kind of get a schedule of when we have centers and lunch and recess. But typically we um, start the day with a welcome work and a morning meeting. So the children come into the classroom and they're responsible for emptying out their book bags, pulling out their take home folders, which is our main source of communication with parents. They each get a little plastic folder. Um, anything important that needs to go home is in that folder, uh, goes in the child's folder and backpack. And then anything that you have important for us, we check that folder every day. We don't check backpacks, but we check folders. So anything important, money, notes would go in that folder. And that's, um, they're, they're starting to learn to become independent, unpacking their things and um, putting their folders where they should go. And then they usually have a little activity to do on their desks while they wait for, um, wait for the, everyone else to arrive. Uh, we have a two hour um, reading and writing block. Sometimes we have it all in one chunk and sometimes we break it up into chunks depending on how our day flows. But um, during this time, they'll be listening to stories and poems. So there's a lot of oral, um, oral language learning. Um, we also have guided reading groups where students will be in, uh, in differentiated groups and they meet with the teacher in small groups and they also meet with the teacher aide. We all have a full-time aide and uh, she also is in part of the rotation. And um, some writing opportunities, half an hour for recess. We have about 45 minutes to an hour for math. And then lunch is a half hour. Science and social studies is in there. Centers are 45 minutes and centers are, uh, they rotate. So we have uh, physical education would be one day, music another day. Um, computers, art, library, and then about once a month, the school counselor comes in and will do a, a, a lesson on uh, citizenship or how to, how to uh, control, self-control or th things that would be helpful to a kindergarten student. Um, we also have some remediation time. That's a time set aside for students who maybe didn't finish up work can finish it up um, during that time or if they need some extra help with letters and sounds or any kind of or numbers or any any other kind of help. And then choice time is kind of their indoor free play time. And that's also a time that uh, a lot of us use for re remediation. And then we wrap things up and pack up and head on head on home. So it's a very, very long day. And 
Um, just a little tip. I know when my oldest started kindergarten, it was from September till almost December when she was just an emotional mess when she got home. It's really hard for a five-year-old to keep it together for the teacher all day long. And when they get home to their safe place, that's when all the emotions come out. And so they might, it might take a little while for them to adjust. Um, and so you might have, you know, a bit of a hot mess on your hands for, for a couple weeks or even a few months as they get acclimated to the long, long day and not having their moms and dads with them. And so it is, it is a big adjustment for them. So just be really patient with them and lots of downtime on the weekend would help. Um, so next slide, Beth, thank you. Um, we have a lot of fun experiences in kindergarten. Of course, this year was a little different because of COVID, but we were still able to do as many of the, these activities as we could fit in with the special circumstances that we were given. Um, we have a beautiful Cardinal Trail. It's a trail that goes in the woods and uh, goes all the way around the school in the back. So we like to, to take walks, nature walks. Um, we have a, a garden at Matoka. And so the kindergarten, um, we usually uh, plant seeds and then watch them grow and then are able to eat the products. Uh, we have a big hundredth day of school you know, the first 100 days of school is a big deal and we count down to the 100th day of school and we'll do 100 day activities that day. Lots of STEM opportunities, although in kindergarten we like to call it STEAM. So we have science, technology, engineering, and we throw art in there and math. Um, and then Read Across America Day is in March and we have a lot of fun activities as a school this year because it was virtual. Um, kids were given books to read or listen to online and they, they were able to vote for their favorites. So that was fun. Um, PTA has a group, their biggest fundraiser is the Matoka Walkathon. I believe it's usually in the fall and it's a big fundraiser. Kids get pledges and then we walk around the school and um, have a fun day. And then a big highlight in kindergarten is hatching baby chicks. That was something we were able to do this year. Um, and we uh, have a great relationship with Kelray Farms. They provide fertilized eggs for us and then they take the chicks um, when we're finished with them. So that's always a, a fun activity for us to do. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andrea Turner and um, this is my 18th, 17th year of teaching. Um, I've been at Matoka since it opened. I've taught first grade here, third grade, and I've been in kindergarten the last six years. Um, I'm really excited to get to meet the new Cardinals that are coming in August, but I thought I would give you a little idea of what you can do to get ready this summer. Um, fine motor is so important in kindergarten. Um, we notice that a lot of times our little ones are playing on tablets a lot more and they're not using those muscles as much. So Play-Doh is great. Um, start using pencils, crayons, scissors, and a glue stick. Um, have your little ones try and listen and focus and color for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Do something independent for a longer period of time. Um, recognize and write their first name is critical, um, working cooperatively with peers and adults and following two-step directions are important. Beth, thank you. But what we really want you to do to get ready um, is help with those self-help skills, self-care skills, becoming a little bit more independent. Um, we cannot go in the bathroom with your kiddos, so they need to be able to use the restroom and clean up themselves on their own. Um, yes, they're going to have accidents and we will help with that, but we really can't go in the restroom with them. So start working on that process. Um, shoes. We start to teach tying shoes a little bit, but it is so hard to keep all those little ones tied all day long. So Velcro is amazing, unless you can get them to tie their shoes before you come. That would be even better. It could be a shoe tie helper. Um, coats and taking care of their backpack, all of those good things. Make sure they can get their coat on by themselves, pack their backpack up, unpack it, talk to them about what is in their backpack. If they're packing a daily snack and a lunch, let them know um, what their snack is for the day and what their lunch is for the day. Just talk to them about what's in their backpack so they're aware of what's in there as well because they're gonna be the ones unpacking it and bringing us their folder like Mrs. Forget had said. Um, and getting all those things together. Library books, 
We don't expect them to be ready to go off to college by any means, but starting to get those independent skills are really helpful when we have a big class. So imagine getting one ready, we have to get you know close to 20 of them ready all at one time. So that would be helpful for us and for them. I'm done with mine. <laughs> hey there families, I'm Catherine Nall. I go by Katie, but I tell everybody Catherine because that is my email. So just in case you're trying to get in touch with us. Um, so typical, well, actually I'll tell you, I have been teaching for 19 years now, which is scary to think about. Um, 12 of those years have been at Matoka. Six of those years were in fifth grade, and then I took a leap of faith and I came down to kindergarten for six years, and I am not leaving, hopefully. So, um, typically on this day, we are spending time with your kiddos, and it's been great meeting and seeing all of you all on this webinar, but we're really more interested in your cute little kiddos. So, what we're planning on doing, um, and details are all very tentative, so just know that we are going to be in touch with you over the summer, is we would like to invite everybody to come into school in August. Um, we're looking at the week of August 9th, so we'll pick a day, and we'll send out a sign up genius, and you'll sign up for time slots, so that way we're just not all together at the same exact time. Um, and it'll be a little bit more intimate. We'll be able to spend time with smaller groups of kids, but we would like to be able to provide them with a little mini kindergarten experience. We're calling it Jumpstart, um, but your child will come for an hour to an hour and a half. Again, the details are not totally planned out at this time until we know more from uh, central office, but um, you'll be able to sign up for a time slot. You'll be coming as well. That's a great opportunity for you all to be able to finish up paperwork, get stuff copied in the front office if you haven't done that already. Um, I'm gonna talk to the PTA and see if they could possibly have their merchandise tables so you could get some, uh, some cute swag for your child. And um, your child will come down to the classroom. They'll meet with kindergarten teachers. They'll get to see everything. We'll do some fun kindergarten-y things. The bonus with doing this in August is then we're only two, three weeks out from the start of the school year. So it actually, in my eyes, is kind of even better this way because when we did kindergarten registration in May, then they had such a long haul until they actually got to come into our classrooms at open house in August. So this will be cool because they'll see all of our faces um, you know, and if our team is bigger at that time, they'll be able to see the new teachers as well, not just the three of us. And they will get to, um, you know, just kind of see what's going on, what kindergarten is all about, and maybe meet a few new friends. So we're excited about that. Um, and if you have questions before then, just be patient with us. We will get everything hammered out. I'm sure the details will come forward in July. But if you have questions before then, please feel free to reach out to the office. If it's something that we need to answer, the office can get in touch with us. Um, okay, so that's it for the Jumpstart experience. And then um, I apologize if you all have heard my spiel before because I've done the kindergarten registration gig in the past, but I love to end with a little quote. Um, it says, parents create the environments and experiences in which learning happens, which makes them the first teachers their children will ever have. So not sure if you all think about it that way, but you're really the first teacher that your child has. We're coming in for backup support here, and we are excited to um, start this school journey with you and really partner. Um, that's the best way to describe it because we're doing this together. It's not just all on us. It's not just all on you. We want your child to see that this is a partnership and that we're going to be working together to help them to the best of our abilities. So I think that's all I have. I know there's probably a few more slides, Beth. Yeah, just to remind everyone that uh, another way the division has really tried to step forward uh, and we are uh, along uh, the same lines of the school um, active on YouTube. The division has a YouTube channel. Um, we are tweeting out things. We are out on Facebook um, trying to get out the word, highlight activities and whatnot. Our PTA, just a moment to mention our PTA. Actually, our PTA president is with us today because she has a kindergartner coming along. We have a very, 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 very supportive and active PTA. Um, she will be in touch with information. When you come in to finish your registration, there is some information that will be provided to you as to hear more about the PTA, love to get you involved with that. Um, 
and you'll hear more about that um, as the year draws nearer. A um, couple other things from me. Um, I, I want to be, you know, upfront with you about anything related to uh, COVID, and as Katie sort of mentioned, that um, we pushed off what we're actually more excited about to offer you, which we would have been doing today, um, having your little ones here with you and us being in person with one another, but uh, we pushed that off. Uh, all the elementary schools have pushed that off into August, hoping for continued progress related to uh, the COVID-19 experience that we're all working through, um, hoping that more folks will be vaccinated um, and that simply um, everything will have continued to progress to help everyone feel more comfortable and safer about getting together in small or medium-sized groups and whatnot. You know probably right now that we are back in person with all of our students four days a week. The goal for the school division next year is five days a week, full days, um, um, back to that word normal, back to hopefully getting back to normalcy. Um, so I do want you to know that our school nurse and the director of health services for the school division, her name is Janice Fowler. Our school nurse is Yvonne Lukes, um, are available to you to uh, answer questions. Uh, normally, um, our school nurse would be with us today, our guidance counselor would be with us today, our registrar would be with us today, but um, uh, we, uh, across the elementary schools, decided to sort of um, expedite this sort of basic information by not having too many folks involved, but please know that uh, all of those folks are available to you if you need questions that need to be answered along the lines of uh, the COVID-19 experience, what we're doing here at school. Beth and I can try to answer as best uh, we might with questions along those lines too. Uh, let's talk about August for a second. Um, again, you saw that slide about we, what we'd like to have prepared to offer you and your child another experience by coming out. Uh, do know that you'll be hearing from us in August. Um, do know that Beth and I welcome, as I said earlier, opportunities to meet with you, talk with you, receive emails from you. If there's things that you'd like us to know about your child, we, we welcome that opportunity. I do want to uh, add to that, though, that... Um, you met three of our teachers today. There hopefully will be uh, two more, again, the five. Um, every year I tell our parents that I, I welcome the input. We want to know from your perspective what type of teacher, what type of setting, what are the needs that will help to make a year successful for your child, short of asking me for a specific teacher. Um, uh, we're, we're well aware of um, what can happen out in the community as far as uh, who's who, who's the best, who's not to have, and all those sort of things. We're not naive about those things. Uh, this is the first step for us in creating the trust that you have to have with us, that you can share with us what you need to share with us, and that Beth and I and others will make the best decision possible as far as classroom placement is concerned. So I, I encourage you to get in touch with us to let us know what we need to know, particularly with the kindergarten year, because we don't know a lot about your child and we'd like to know as much as possible to help us make the very best placement possible. So doing that you know, before August uh, or early August is helpful. You're gonna start hearing from us in August. You'll get correspondence by mid-August as far as uh, which teacher your child has, bus stop information and all other sorts of materials and things uh, that you might need to know about. Um, I believe soon, um, within many of the, uh, the merchants around town, you'll find um, the um, requested um, materials that our kindergarten team would like for each child to have. It'll also be posted on our website as well, if you're an early shopper. Certainly before that uh, tax-free day, you'll have that information if that's when you want to do your shopping for school supplies. Um, one of the first slides that Don Forgett showed you about some of the things that we have going on here at school. We welcome you. This is a public school. Feel free to come here on the weekends, uh, use our playground, check out the nature trail, go in our garden. That may help to acclimate you and your child to the school. We welcome you to do that. Um, Beth, were, were you able to figure out how to unmute everybody? We, we do see some questions in the chat room. We can begin addressing those as well, but uh, we were going to also try to let folks um, ask if they wanted to speak any questions as well. I think Andy, if they have a question, they'll just have to um, individually unmute, um, but please do okay. so. We do have one question in the chat about on Jumpstart Day, will the parents or, or families already know which student their child will have before they attend the Jumpstart Day? I would say possibly, but unlikely um, because 
I, as I sort of referenced earlier, we do uh, unfortunately have some insecurities about enrollments for next year. Um, I can give you as a starting point, we have about 42 people in our registration portal who have already begun the process and or are ready to receive an invite to come out to bring their documents to school. I think I mentioned the number to you that we need to get to be around, uh, we were projected to be around 100 or shortly over 100 students. Um, so it really all depends on where we're at with our enrollment as far as our ability to create our classes and to know exactly uh, which teacher will be assigned to each student. Um, so I'll say possibly, but um, more on the unlikely given that particular event. Can I piggyback off of that yep. and just um, share that on the Jumpstart Day, because we have such small groups, the children will be introduced to all the teachers. They'll get to see all the classrooms, maybe not spend you know a ton of time in each room, but that does help a little bit. So we should all at least look familiar to um, the kiddos. But yeah, I think with enrollment, like if we get a surge in late August and then have to create another class, it would be too. So anyway, just to let them know, we try our best to make sure everybody gets to see all of us. Honestly, folks, uh, we, we know that uh, some of you and others may be waiting till we are a public school. We have no deadlines that anyone can come and register at any time that they want. Um, we believe that there'll be some folks um, justifiably so, no problem with it, waiting till after the summer to determine what they may want to do with their child. So uh, one of our, our worries is not necessarily uh, under enrollment, but that we could have a sudden rush of enrollment. And we have had some years, uh, a couple of years with our 15 years here at Matoka, where into the first week or two of school, the enrollment jumped and we had to create another classroom. Um, you will, when the letter that you get from us telling you your placement for your child in August, there will be a line at the bottom saying we retain the right uh, given uh, possible fluctuations of enrollment that uh, we, we, what you've received in the mail may not be permanent. Uh, we may have to make adjustments one way or another. So uh, I just throw that out there. Anyone wanna unmute and ask a question? Uh, Christy Wall, our PTA president, anything you wanna give a plug on for the PTA? Or not? She, she might be outside washing cars. That's no, true. <laughs> yes. PTA today is uh, treating our teachers to car washes as part of uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. And I was going to say, way to throw her on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone like to ask a question? Feel free um, to ask I I'd like to just make a comment and ask one question, if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, we just had our first, our, our oldest son went through the kindergarten system with you guys last year. And I have to say that he knows all of the teachers. So it's not about, you know, which one teacher is your child going to be assigned to because they all work like a family. So anyone that's new to all this, you're gonna get a family, it's not one teacher. So that was our, our greatest experience at Matoka. And then we have another, our daughter is now coming to kindergarten. And the question I have is, is there some kind of, um, I guess not a placement test, but are they, are the new kindergarten just because of this pandemic, are they going to be kind of um, tested on a few things like writing, reading, um, just so that we kind of know where they're at when they're starting? Stephanie, yeah, thanks sir. for that question. Um, Part of what we have traditionally done today, if you were here in person with your little one, is we would have uh, found some time to do that. Let me let one of the kindergarten teachers tell you about maybe what they're thinking about yeah. for the August experience. I, I can answer to that. Um, usually on a, a normal kindergarten registration day, we would take them aside really quickly and test them on how many letters and sounds they know, um, if they know any um, simple uh, high frequency words, um, colors, that kind of thing. And we'll probably do that in September anyway. We always test them as they first come in in September. And it's not really, you know, if they know a few letters or a lot of letters, it doesn't really matter. We just kind of want to know where they're at because we teach where they're at and, and then bump them along uh, that way. So um, everybody will be given a, a screening. And then in October, we have a PALS test, which is a um, literacy test that all of um, children in Virginia are given in kindergarten. And that's also letters, sounds, rhyming, beginning sounds. And again, it's just to identify those kiddos that need a little extra help to help us guide our teaching. Great, so, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. 
uh, someone asked about uh, mass uh, face coverings. Um, right now, we are 100% expecting everyone who enters our building and is on our premises, even outdoors, we do accommodate with mass breaks. Uh, we do have individual situations where we are working with a child um, who may need some accommodations. Um, but um, as of right now, the expectation is um, full face coverings in Williamsburg James City County Schools, excuse me, at all times. We don't know at this point what the expectation will be in the fall. You all realize that even uh, last week, the CDC has changed their guidelines. It has been an incredible odyssey for us keeping up with the adjustments through the pandemic. I would expect more coming forward. So to answer uh, what the expectations will be for face covering, social distancing and all that for next fall, I'd be a little bit premature right now. Um, I do realistically expect us to have to need some of those things still to be in place. Um, and indeed those face coverings are driving us crazy. Um, we, we have, I, I've been quite pleased with the way the children have, have worked through them. Um, as always, um, these things tend to be easier for the little ones than they are for the big ones like us, but um, we've been doing pretty well. Um, I see another questions. Are there any concerns regarding a larger enrollment this year, given how many kiddos opted out of virtual kindergarten? Additionally, are there any concerns regarding possible larger age gaps given the pandemic? Yes, all of those are real uh, wonderments on our parts. Um, and that's the position that we are unfortunately having to be in. We have to sit back and wait. Um, the division has tried to proactively reach out to families who were part of the virtual academy to welcome them back. Uh, nobody can force them back. Uh, next year at the elementary level, there is no virtual academy. There is what's called Virtual Virginia, which is offered through the State Department of Virginia to any Virginia resident. It is a virtual academy format. Um, right now, we are not, uh, we don't have our list. We don't know how many parents are opting for that. I'm sure we'll get that eventually. Um, but um, it is, uh, so to speak, one size fits all next year as we speak, whereas this year, it was offered uh, as a um, school within a school almost, uh, the virtual academy for elementary students. And I think we had uh, about 20% of our Matoka population. I mentioned to you earlier, we're generally around a school of 700. This year in person, we've been about a school of 530. So we are projected, I don't know, I don't do those projections. Um, but we are projected to get back up to about 700. And, um, yeah, we have wondered about, you know, whether there are families we're working through our annual retention process right now. Um, and we've wondered uh, whether there were families given all of the circumstances surrounding this past year and spring that might want to repeat um, given uh, gaps and things like that. But um, I can say that it hasn't necessarily been very dramatic along those lines. Um, so um, we continue to live and learn through the circumstances surrounding uh, this pandemic. Anyone else like to unmute and ask a question? <clears throat> Is there visions for kindergarten? When the kindergarten teachers want to talk about the annual process, I will add that, um, and I think it may already be posted or shortly posted, the state requires uh, localities to uh, review and update their gifted and talented um, policies, procedures, and programs every five years. And that was just recently completed. There are going to be some changes to the Williamsburg James City County gifted and talented plan procedures processes. And I believe that's gonna be posted soon, but go ahead kindergarten folks, share what you'd like. Um, I'm happy to answer that one. Um, as far as kindergarten goes in, February, typically we have all of the kindergartners take um, a certain test. It's called an NAT test. It's not reading or math related, um, but basically that gives us kind of a jumping off point for our gifted teacher to start looking at some of our kiddos who might possibly um, fit in that category. But Besides that, there's also an opportunity for parents to refer. So this year we were not able, we weren't back in school full time and it just really was not um, conducive to taking that NAT test. So um, parents were able to refer. That process of referring kids for the gifted program happens in the spring. It usually starts in February. There will be emails sent out. I know Mr. Jacobs sent it out. If you have older kids, you may have seen that. Um, but it usually takes almost until the end of the school year. I think they'll be meeting in May and you'll get notifications. So they won't technically be working with a gifted teacher during their kindergarten year. So we kind of build towards that in the spring. 
And then um, if they are um, in the program, then I think pull out services would happen in first grade. They might go see the gifted teacher for 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. It kind of builds throughout kindergarten. Um, excuse me. My, my apologies. Um, but anyway, just to let you know, that's usually a spring thing. But if you ever needed to chat with the gifted teacher, we're happy to give the email address or um, help you get in touch with her. At any time, parents, you have the right to make a referral for such consideration. Um, that works for gifted and talented, that works for special education. And generally, I want you to know that works for anything that you need us to know or need us to do. Um, we will be happy to entertain any requests that you have uh, and try to figure out what is the best thing for your child. We have a question about, uh, do, do we have somebody who speaks Spanish? Uh, we are actually fortunate at Matoka. We have several folks here in the school who are fluent. The division has a full-time employee. His name is uh, George Rivas. And in fact, uh, not our uh, particular recording today for this ex ex um, kindergarten information session, but there is uh, the basics uh, of the forms that I work through with all of the nuts and bolts as to how to help somebody figure out how to get registered is going to be completely uh, translated and dialogued in Spanish and posted on the division's website um, after today. Uh, it may be up as of today, even as I speak. That's what I'm told from our central office. So we're happy to help with if there's any interpretation that may need to be serviced. Other questions from folks? Hi, thanks for doing this presentation. I stepped away for a second, so I apologize if this was covered, but um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit and then also tell us where we can maybe find the information online about just the curriculum and even past kindergarten um, what the Williamsburg James City County approaches to the curriculum and themes and things that are being taught um, through um, all the subjects. I'll give you the, the boring piece, which is of course at any time, you should be able to find on our division's website or links on ours. Uh, everything begins with uh, from the Virginia Department of Education with the standards of learning, the SOLs. Um, then localities are able to take those SOLs and sometimes tweak, often, I would say almost in 80 to more than 90%, uh, we are parallel with what we're expected to do from the state perspective, but localities retain some um, flexibility to adjust where certain curriculum topics may be hit. Kindergarten folks, do you wanna talk about some overviews that you provide folks uh, about your pacing and things like that? Um, well, we will definitely let you know a week or so at a time um, in our weekly newsletter, what themes we're working on for the week. Um, and what topics we're working on. And then we pretty much spiral through everything in kindergarten. Um, we relate everything in our world and what's going on with um, holidays to seasons to um, Earth Day and all of those things that are happening in the life right now is what we try to focus on as we're teaching. And then we throw in the reading and the math um, thematically through that. Um, so of course, there's always the SOLs you can look at um, to see what our focuses are. But um, we definitely try and expand upon what the actual SOLs are and relate it to real life for the kids. Safe to say from this 58-year-old's uh, perspective, what we're currently doing with kindergartners um, wasn't covered until I was in first or second grade. Um, and that is both good and bad. Um, we have to be sensitive to the fact that these little ones are coming to us at different stages of development. And my team is very good at trying to, uh, and someone, the previous question about some of the assessments that we do is, is really to try to get a good handle on where each child is and try to meet them right at the start from where they are. We have our expectations, we have our goals, um, and we are going to push towards them, but we, we do maintain um, a very definite uh, developmentally appropriate appreciation for where each child is. And then the work begins between you and us with the dialogue that we want to have with what we're experiencing here at home, excuse me, here, this home, and what you're experiencing at your home and trying to, as a team, figure out what the best path is. That curriculum can be modified, adjusted, slowed, um, um, sped up. Somebody asked about the gifted and talented program. It is the greatest puzzle that uh, faces a teacher each year. Um, if they get 23 little ones in the room, Literally, it is 23 different puzzle pieces that we have to figure out how as best we can to meet those children 
um, where they're at and take them where we want them to go. Other questions? <clears throat> Great questions. All right, well, um, again, I hope today, even though we really would have preferred being in person, just, just would have been much better for sure. Uh, but we hope today that we've achieved our goal with you, which is to give you some basic information to help you feel informed, to help you begin to feel more comfortable about what's up ahead. Um, if there are still things that you want answered, you need help with, uh, whatever it is, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I, I want you to know that at any time moving forward. Um, our emails um, are located um, on our staff listings on our website. Um, the phone number is pretty accessible. Um, you choose the medium that helps you to feel comfortable reaching out to us and we will be happy to uh, begin the collaboration with you moving forward. Um, wishing everyone a happy Friday, a safe and happy and healthy uh, Mother's Day and everything moving forward. And uh, we are very excited to begin working with you all and look forward to seeing you in person um, sometime soon. And um, we, will, we will talk again. Everyone have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.